I don't know really what I thought about how we'd be 30 years on from doing Liquidizer. It feels very strange to be... It feels very strange to be doing it, but at the same time, when you when you when you start, you always hope that you're going to be carrying on doing it. And I, but I don't think I had any idea about a set path about where we'd be. So I, we'd start playing little gigs, and you end up playing arenas, and then you get to the point of being Sting, and you're just playing stadiums around the world. I didn't ever think that that would be our career path. I hoped that we'd be carrying on doing something. So the fact that we are is great. There is no way that we would have uh, imagined we'd been playing the song, the same songs, thirty years later. Absolutely not. I and mean, the thing for me writing the songs is, I thought they would have a life of kind of two or three years. They were meant to be really topical, very topical, and I expected to change as music changed and as kind of things in our culture change, we change as well. So, although to some extent it kind of seems therefore slightly depressing to be playing the same songs uh, 30 years later um it's also really nice to be able to do so
to re-record um, some songs on Liquid Eyes, and not all of them, more than anything else, uh, because I didn't feel that the originals were, were done the way that I really wanted, which is no criticism of Craig Leon, the uh, the producer. It's just it was ve that was very early in my writing and recording, um, and as a result, I kind of didn't really uh, know how, how to go about things the right way. Things were, were, were too crammed, like Bring It On Down never really worked as one type of song or another, I felt. So what I wanted to do with these re-recordings was um, basically try and get closer to my original vision. Um, and I think I've, I'm pretty sure that I've done that, um, especially with song, songs like All The Answers, which I've always loved and we've played for, you know, we've played it every time we've taught pretty much um, for 30 years. So it was a really good opportunity to, to present those songs the way I wanted them to be heard, not the way they ended up coming out on the album. Um, yeah, it was an idea to get definite sounds because we were recreating Liquidizer. So we'd listen to Liquidizer and think, well, the synths did this, or there's an, there's an acid line that sounded like this, so how would we recreate it now? So it was definitely about trying to retranslate the noises back then into the language of now. The choice of songs was really easy because it was just the ones that I didn't uh, feel had been done justice the first time around. So, uh, as I said, all the answers, um, bring it on down. Those were songs that I felt uh, I wanted to, to do justice to those. Something like Info, there was no point redoing that um, because it was done. I mean, you know, it was it was produced by 
by us really um so it had had that vision so uh, uh some of the other songs on there i thought if we'd redone something like um too much to learn they would have been done for the sake of doing them again which didn't really seem to be worthwhile um so it was pretty clear cut you know which which one should be done it, it just let out me straight away i don't think there were any other contenders really we um, we just looked at the album and thought what which if we had to pick a certain amount of tracks, which ones would we do? And those also were the ones that I think Mike thought to himself, not that they're the ones that he was really unhappy with, but the ones that he thought, just the language of music had moved on so much since Liquidizer, and it was tempting to think what would new songs be be like and how would it change the old language of those songs and those were the ones that seemed as though they they'd benefit from the transition i definitely wanted jen to be all over this um because yeah the the, the drumming on liquidizer is intentionally very basic uh because it was all you know meant to be kind of replicating house and hip hop but I don't think it's necessarily to the song's advantage so this time it's just letting Jen have free reign and let him letting him play the way he, he plays live the way he wants to play um I felt that it just makes the songs breathe a little bit more and that was a kind of problem with liquidizer I felt anyhow that there wasn't there was often not kind of life in the songs where I really wanted uh, there to be life <laughs>
the way we record these days is much easier because it's all done on laptops, you know, go don't have to go to the studio or anything like that, but it doesn't really make any difference um, if Alan sends me bass parts from Chicago or if he's in a room in the same studio but I can't see him. Um, we're in a control room here uh, and the, the, the venue, the performance area is over there, it's completely remote. Um, so it doesn't really make any difference at all, but it just everything is so much easier because you can do it, you know, I, I, I can, you can, you can, work on the files in the, in the van all the way up to the gig so it makes no difference as long as you've got that sound file it's all the same <laughs> We've already, we've done Bring about, about, there's about 15 different versions of Bring that we've, we've done from the start of the band. Um, there was the one that started with the Evil Dead noise where it went, wee, 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 and then in. And then there was the sort of standard single version, which is the version that we're playing now. And then as far as the kind of long acid -y version, which is the version that we've gradually played, that one's sort of morphed over the part about the past 25 years. There was the bit where it had a Donna Summer sample in the middle and, and then the noises at the beginning and in the middle sort of changed over time. And it's one of the, it's like a process of Chinese whispers. It changed and changed and changed, built upon change to the point where um, it started to take on a bit of its, a life of its own. So with the version that's on the Liquidizer EP, the, 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 what we were trying to do was to take all of those things that we've done over the last 20 to 25 years and combine them into one 
final draw a line in the sand version of Bring. Um, so that's why it, there are aspects of it which are a bit like Liquidizer, but then there's almost every other aspect of every other version of Bring that we've ever done is thrown in there um, to try and see if we can just get it all out in one go and have it as, as a definitive record of what's those various versions of Bring sounded like. The version of Bring It On Down that's, that's on this EP uh, is done that way because that's really what I was trying to do on Liquidizer. But we, we knew it was a good contender for a single and in those days everyone was, the thinking was always, you know, the single's got to be really uh, concise and, and to the point, you know, it's got to be, if you can bring it in in less than three minutes so much the better. Whereas the vision for the song was was supposed to be far longer, more more drawn out, and really what I've done is kind of take the original song and add an acid house section in it, which is like I'm kind of taking a, a one of its remixes and adding it in in the middle. But it's it's in a way to show you that the roots of that song, where that song, that the the long acid house middle section is to show you where that song came from. Really, if it hadn't been for the kind of the sounds in the section of that, the middle section of that that song, the rest of the song would never have existed. So that was the kind of idea to, to try to go from one to the other. And in a way, I suppose, kind of do what we've always done is, is you know, blend the song element with the, uh, the, the dance music element. <laughs>
Um, I always love all the answers. It's, as soon as I wrote that, I just, same same kind of feeling with um, right here, right now. You know, the moment you as you as you're writing the song, actually, not the moment you finish it. As you're writing, you're thinking, yeah, I've, I've got something good here. It's good. Um, info always was good. Um, uh, it still is good. What else off off liquidizer that I really enjoy? Uh, mountains as well, actually. Move mountains, move mountains. Answers and uh, info. Those, those are my favourite to play. Still love those. And if we don't put them in the set, I always feel I've been shortchanged a bit. I mean, I like playing info because it's mad. But at the same time, I've, I've almost played info too many times. Like it's like never enough. I'm kind of a bit over never enough. And info, I love playing it. It's great. It's got the most kind of it makes that energy surge through you. But it's kind of old to me. I mean, there hasn't been a gig where we have not played so yeah there yeah there hasn't been a gig where we haven't played info ever you know and we've played however many hundred shows so i like the ones perhaps that we haven't played for or we don't play as much um so what's what's going on was great i really enjoy playing that um i like playing i like playing someone to blame that changes enough for, for it to keep um being interesting for me and it's got I, I when, once we put all of the crazy feedback stuff in the middle of that i really loved i don't that takes it to a different dimension for me it ta it makes it it transports me in a way because it's um i love songs that sort of drone and the various sounds start to swim around you in a way and and Someone to Blame definitely does that. Um, of the new things that we're dropping in and this tour that we haven't played for a while, possibly um, too much to learn, actually. Real World, I'm not that fussed about. But someone, um, but too much um, to learn, I think, is just fantastic. And it's a lot of fun to play live, which is weird because it's got a lot of samples on it and it's incredibly complex to play live. Um, and normally those sorts of songs I never enjoy because it's it's too much effort to, to enjoy yourself. You're sitting there going, right, I've got to remember to do it this way. But um, too much to learn seems to transcend that. And that, so that's an awful lot of fun to play. <laughs>
on the EP are basically um, an attempt to play Jesus Jones songs of the past with the attitude and way that we look at music of the Jesus Jones now and we are so much better, I think, because we're, we're better as a band than we were five years ago, let alone 30 years ago. And so we just thought, well, what would it be like if, as a band, as a better band now, what would it be like if we could, you know, everybody says, don't go back, but what would it be like if we tried to go back and see how it sounded? The new versions of this, uh, the songs that we released on, on this EP are very much based on how we've played the songs since they were recorded. So they have changed um, since Liquidizer. Um, it's someone to blame, for example, within weeks, I think, of, uh, of recording that version, the Liquidizer version of Someone to Blame, we changed it because I wasn't really happy with the whole kind of feel of it. And we've always played that, but we've always played that second version live. Um, but uh, otherwise, when we all notice that, you know, something like Bring It On Down or All The Answers, it's actually quite strange when you listen to the Liquidizer version because that's not how we've played it for at least 10, 20 years. Um, so yeah, the, the there is this kind of evolving of the songs and we've just captured the, the current uh, point of that evolution on this on this latest recording.
saying to Mike, like, have a guess mate as to what the, like, the top three songs are that we played and he'd be like well right here and now and I'm like, yes that's number one and and whatever and international was maybe number two and I said like then the third one that gets played more often than any of the other um, is Devil and and at that point and Mike was like oh okay fair enough and at that point we hadn't actually played it since I can't remember. I'm sure the last time we played it is the Marquee show. I think so. I think it's the Marquee DVD show is the last time we played it. Um, which is 2004 or something like that. So we haven't played it for 15 years. And I and I, so I said to Mike, he was saying, well, well you know, what could we put the extra songs in the set? And I'm like, We're, I know it's a bit of a ball ache and we've got to do the sequencing and the sampling again but we've got to play devil because loads of people love it and we're ignoring one of the biggest sort of singles that we ever had it was our top 10 single so we really should play it and once we started playing it of course um it sounded great and it still does it sounds it sounds really good because it's powerful and it's it's got the little santour noise which is the thing at the beginning um and the crazy guitars in the in the chorus parts so it's it's been great to get it back in the set and to have it sounding good so fast as well so when we started doing the set when we were rehearsing to do the set we you know effectively we had like four new songs four or five here what's going on one for the money we haven't played that for ages too much to learn real world devil so we had five new songs and normally you have to rehearse those five new tracks again and again and again to get them into shape. And Devil took about a play and a half through at rehearsals. And we looked at each other and we were like, well, that's done. Because it, it, it just, it, for all its complexity, it's quite easy to play. Um, so yeah, I'm glad it's back. We're doing the Devil, you know, again, um, just because it's been, glaringly obvious that we should have done it for a while you know it was a single it was a, a top 10 single plenty of fans really like it I think we were put off it for a while because it's it's quite a hard song to play um, and I think it, when we were touring with Perverse I, I think we often didn't do it very much justice or as I felt now we'd be much better able to do it and I did uh, I kind of wrote a, a, a new version of it or it's it's an amended no. Yeah, I suppose it is. It's a slightly different version for live. Um, often when we do these live versions, it's done in a way I kind of think. It, it's done in my memory of how the song was done, um, not a kind of exact replica of it. Um, it's also one of the songs that's been detuned a little. We do it in a different key just to make it easier sing, to sing night after night. But yeah, it was, it was the obvious one to do, and uh, you know, it was, it's been out of the set for so long. I think. The, the longer it, be, it had been out of the set, the harder it was to imagine it being back in the set. So it's about time to put that to an end. Yeah. 